you've lost touch with a friend of yours. It's not that a fight spoiled things or that someone came between you. It's just that life happened and you gradually fell out of sync with each other's lives. But let's suppose that one day you're walking down memory lane, reminiscing about the good old days when an image of your long lost friend pops into your head. As you reach for your phone to contact this friend, you realize that you've lost touch and you're worried that they might think this is totally random and awkward. Well, we're here to tell you that no matter how random and awkward it might feel, you are absolutely doing the right thing by reaching out. Both of you will be glad you did. We're so confident of this fact that we decided to create a framework that you can use to reconnect with old friends in a way that does not feel uncomfortable or silly. So if you want to learn more, then stick around. What is up, Vix Learners? Mary Daphne here of VixLearning.co, where we believe social skills are the key to the good life. What's the good life? It's a life where you call the shots, you have a crew you can count on, and you're on a mission that you care about. Before I jump in, I wanted to tell you about a great free resource that we've created for the Exploring community. It's a comprehensive small talk guide. So if you find yourself grasping at thin air in unfamiliar social situations, then our small talk guide is just for you. Click the link in the description box below to get the free downloadable delivered straight to your inbox. Okay, back to the lesson how to reach out to a long lost friend, someone you may not have spoken to in weeks, months, maybe even years. First off, it's important to recognize that there is no expiration date on when you can reach back out to someone. It's not like a timer kicks off after you part ways. That said, I get it. The more time floats by, the more distance is perceived between you two. And this comes from a lack of day-to-day -day knowledge about each other. After all, you used to know what their weekend plans were, and now you couldn't say if they were living in Austin, Texas, or Bangkok, Thailand. But that does not change the fact that at one point in your lives, you were very important and special to each other. And that shining fact pierces the fog of time and spans the distance that has grown between you. So let's capitalize on that fact by employing a powerful template for getting back into each other's lives, if only for a moment. Here is what you can say. Hey, name of the person, this might seem out of the blue, but I was thinking about, insert a fond memory with them, and I wanted to check in to see how things are going. I miss, insert activity you would do, hope all is well, and then sign your name. You should use your name when you address them to add that personal touch. And then tell them why you were thinking of them by bringing up an activity or something that made you think of them. That activity could be a spinning class, game nights, concerts, hiking, community service, anything that you did together that created fond memories. And then wish them well and sign off with your name so that they know who it is, right? And that's it for the text, just simple and sweet. There isn't any specific pressure for them to respond, but rest assured, nine out of 10 times they will. All right, now, the next question is, which communication channels should you use to send this? The answer is that it depends on how long it's been since you've last spoken. So let's walk through a few options. Text message, phone, or WhatsApp. If not much time has passed and this was a good friend of yours, then you can reach out by text. It's quick and easy and you'll have a high level of confidence that they'll see that note. That said, text messaging does imply a demand for a bit more immediacy in terms of response time. So if you want to seem less pushy, consider some of the other options that we discussed. Email. Email is a great catch-all communication channel. It doesn't create the same type of 
time pressure for a response. The recipient can start it or snooze it and then get back to it when you know they feel more comfortable doing so, or they can immediately respond to you, right? Email also gives you a little bit more space to expand on the template if you wanted to elaborate on a specific memory in your note to them. But just keep in mind that some people don't check email regularly, and if their inboxes are totally overflowing, then they may miss your email. So if you think that's a risk, consider a different option. In-app messengers. If you haven't spoken to this person in ages, but they exist on social platforms like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn, then go with this. And here's why. You can't be sure if they have the same cell phone number or email. By contrast, on social media platforms, you can see if they have any recent activity, any recent posts. If so, then they're likely to see your message there. So give it a shot. You can even comment on something that they've shared as the trigger for reaching out. Easy icebreaker. Now, what if the person that you're trying to reach is of an older generation and not using text-based software? That is where it would make much sense to reach out by phone, the modern day telegram, right? <laughs> the reality is, is that they come from a generation where the phone was the sole method of long distance contact outside of postage, of course. So they're more accustomed to getting calls out of the blue. So there you have it, a simple game plan for reconnecting with a long lost friend. Let's quickly recap. It's never a bad idea to get back in touch with old friends and it doesn't need to be awkward. Send them a short, friendly message about a memory that surfaced involving them. Sign off with your name so that they know who you are. Be strategic about which communication channel you use based on the nature of your relationship with them and the duration of time since you last spoke. Remember, at some point you shared overlapping values and principles with this person. That's why you became friends in the first place. Chances are that's still the case. So be the brave one and take the first step toward rekindling the friendship. This is an easy, low risk way to boost your mood and keep your social network healthy. And if they don't respond, you still benefited from the pleasant few moments of dwelling on a fond memory as you put it into writing. And if they do respond, who knows what wonderful new experiences or business ventures might come out of it. So now that I've shared our thoughts, I would love to hear your own ideas for reaching out to someone that you haven't spoken to in a while. What insights do you have for making it feel easy and natural? What challenges have you encountered? Share that with me and the Exploring community in the comments down below. And if you love this lesson, please be sure to let me know. You can give this video a thumbs up on YouTube. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to join our tribe of Exploring so that you never miss a lesson. If you ring that bell, you'll get notified about our new lessons and our weekly live streams. Email this video to a friend or a coworker who also wants to supercharge their social skills. And while we're at it, feel free to also share it with your friends on Facebook and Twitter as well. And remember, the write-ups of these lessons are always available on our blog at exploring.co slash blog. With that, have an awesome week, Explorers. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you next time for your next Explorning lesson. Happy exploring.